I'm Liz. Thank you for joining me for Happy Yoga today. So we're going to start off with a dynamic warm-up, just pedalling our feet, coming up onto the toes, transferring our weight from one side to the other, adding in shoulder shrugs, taking your shoulders up to your ears, back and down. Then taking our hands up to our shoulders and drawing circles with our elbows. Keep pedalling through the feet. We're starting to warm our bodies up. Change into full arm circles, if that's appropriate for you. Pedalling through the feet. Lovely, and then bringing that either into a toe tap or a march. Or you can take opposite hand to knee or opposite elbow. So I normally start my yoga with a bit of a dynamic warm up. It just helps to release any tension and stress that I'm hanging on to. So I don't bring that to the mat. And I can start to clear my mind and focus my body on the yoga practice. Bringing the feet out. So a wider leg stance, just transferring your weight from one foot to the other, trying to relax at the shoulder and just letting your arms go around like a pendulum. Again, releasing that tension in our shoulders. As you warm up, you might like to take that twist a little further into the upper body. All the time listening to your own bodies and doing what's right for you. So this practice assumes you're in good health. With, and if you've got any underlying health conditions or if you are expecting that you've sought additional advice. Back to centre, just going to bend the knees, come down towards the floor, wherever feels right for you up to the ceiling, up onto your toes if you want to. Go at your own pace. Just a gentle warm up. Last one. And then taking the feet slightly wider than our hips, and just starting to bend our knees, keeping our bodies upright. Just coming down as far as you can do without tipping forward. And then adding on the arms, taking the arms up like a cactus. And then up to victory arms. Feeling like you're squeezing down your shoulder blades as you come down. And then shooting the arms back up again. Getting ourselves nicely warmed up. And ready for a nice relaxing yoga practice. Well, today's focus is going to be on lots of people with tight hips that have been messaging me. So keep those messages coming if there's anything you'd like me to focus on next. And please let me know you're watching with either a little thumbs up or a comment. Good to know that I'm not talking to myself and just going slightly mad. I'm going to bring the feet in hip distance apart now. Start to move our weight into the sides of our feet, our toes, sides of our feet, heels. And we're just starting some nice big hip circles, warming up our hips and our lower back. Listening to your own bodies, making that as large a movement as, feel com as feels comfortable for you. And then taking it around the other way. Lovely hip circles. Wonderful. And then we're going to come back to some preparatory stretches. So just standing with your feet comfortably placed together. Breathing in, opening up the arms, lifting your chest to the ceiling. Only taking your head back if your neck is strong. Breathing out, hugging the air forward, crossing at the wrist, dropping your head. And breathing in, opening up. And 
in and out. Breathing the arms up beside your head, relaxing the shoulders back and down and then dropping the arm on your right hand side, breathing in tall to prepare, bending the knees, breathing out, stretching over, having a lovely big stretch, breathing those arms back up to centre, drop the arm on the left hand side, bend the knees, breathing out, stretch, Breathing the arms back to centre, stretching up, bending the knees, pushing the hips forward, lifting your chest to the ceiling. If your neck and back are strong, breathing in to prepare, breathing out, over into a back bend. Breathe back up to centre. As you breathe out, you can either just walk down your legs, or swan dive forward, come into a half bend, half forward bend, getting as much length as you can from the crown of your head to the top of your back of your tailbone. Breathe in to prepare and as you breathe out, come down into a full forward bend. Just see wherever your body takes you. If you're not Getting your hands down to the mat, it doesn't matter at all, but you might like to hold opposite elbows, just so you can feel yourself dangling there. As if your hips are being pulled up to the ceiling by an invisible thread, and you're just dangling like a rag doll, the weight of your head, just melting towards the floor, pulling out any tension in your spine. Keep breathing in that position. Then breathe in, look up, chin down, walking back up, vertebra by vertebra. So bring your belly button back towards your spine. Feel yourself coming back up, vertebra by vertebra. And then circle your shoulders at the top. So coming into our first position, our feet are comfortably close together with the big toes facing forward. You can either have your feet parallel or you can take your heels out wider. It's completely up to you. Take your shoulders up to your ears, relax your arms back and down. Your arms are relaxed at the, your sides, normally with your palms facing forward. Imagine the crown of your head has a string going up to the ceiling and being pulled up as straight as you can. The feet are grounding down into the earth, putting down their roots. And you're standing there as tall as a mountain as you draw your breath into your belly first, then your rib cage, then up into the top of your chest. Hold it there for a couple of heartbeats and then as you breathe out, everything softens and sinks. Take another couple of breaths in your own time, breathing in and out through your nose if you can. If you want to, close your eyes. Just feel the strength of this Tadasana mountain position. And then on the next in breath, take your arms up beside your head, relax your shoulders, draw your arms back a little into upward salute. Reach through those fingertips as, trying, as if you're trying to touch the ceiling. Lift your chest to the ceiling. If your neck is strong, you take your gaze up towards your thumbs. If you want to challenge yourself further in upward salute, you can come up onto your toes. Keep breathing in that position. Set your gaze on something to help with your balance. Draw your belly button back towards your spine. If you're up on your toes, drop your heels and as you breathe out, just press the air away. And bring your arms back down and circle your shoulders. 
So we're going to go into warrior now. So you're aiming towards your leg length distance apart. So we're coming out and our feet are parallel with our toes facing forward. Going to turn the foot out on the left hand side 90 degrees. We're going to check back in with our hips and see if it's comfortable for our bodies to bring those towards centre. Going to breathe the arms up and reach through those fingertips as if you're trying to touch the opposite walls. Take our gaze out over the outturned foot. Breathe in to prepare and as we breathe out we're bending that knee, bringing it down over the ankle, drawing it back slightly towards your little toe. Check in that you can still see your toes and your knee hasn't gone too far forward. If you want to breathe in, and as you breathe out, see if you can sink your body down a little lower into the strength of this warrior two position. Keep breathing in that position, keep active, feel the outside edge of your back foot, feel all the circumference of your front foot. And then we're going to breathe in to prepare and as we breathe out we're just coming around bringing the hands parallel to each other and turning our bodies reach through those hands stay there if that's enough for you or if you want to breathe in to prepare and as you breathe out raise those arms up to the ceiling Breathing in that position, reaching through those fingertips. And bring the hands back into heart centre and take a little step in. And then we're going to prepare to balance here. So keep your hands pressed into heart centre and just take your weight forward onto that front leg. Come up onto the toe of the back leg. And then we're just going to say if we can straighten that front leg and raise the back leg. And you can come down towards the floor if you want to. You might find you bring your hands to the mat. And then carefully coming back up. And getting ready to do the other side. Lovely. So back out into a wide leg position and turning the foot out on the right hand side 90 degrees. Checking back in with your hips. Are they comfortably forward? If that works for your body, breathing the arms up, reaching through those fingertips, taking the gaze out over that outturned foot, breathing in to prepare and then breathing out sinking down, bending that knee, stacking it above the ankle, checking back in that you can still see your toes, being active in the um, outside edge of the back foot, all of the front foot, and reaching through the fingertips. Breathe in as you breathe out, see if you can sink down a little further into the strength of this warrior position. Well done. Then breathe in to prepare, and as you breathe out, turn the hands. Bring the hands of the body round to face forward. Stay there if that's enough for you. Or breathe in to prepare, breathe out. Take the arms up, reaching through those hands to the ceiling. Keep breathing in that position. Keep strong in that position. And then drop the hands down into heart centre, step the foot in. Straighten the front leg, come up onto the toe of the back foot. And then you can, if you want to, straighten that leg, raise the back leg. And if you want to, you can bow down towards the leg. Or even to the floor. And bring your hands either side of your foot if they get there. 
and then gently coming back up and shaking that out. Well done. So we're going to come into some more balancing now. We're going to take our weight into the leg on the right hand side so you can just place the heel down, splay the toes, replace the toes and claw them as if you're making a monkey foot. Bring your weight into that leg. And then set your gaze on something to help with your focus, draw your belly button back to your spine to use your core muscles. And then we're just going to raise the knee in line with the hip and just hug it in for a moment. Obviously if you need to, you can come to a wall, have any other support that you need for balancing. If you're happily there, just going to circle our ankles one way and then the other. And then just bring your hands to your hips and just see if you can take that knee out to the side. Just have a little check in of how that feels in your body today and where you've got to. And then bring the knee back, down and shake it through. So we're going to revisit that now. So we're balancing back on the same leg again. I'm going to do our preparations to lift that knee again. This time we're bringing the hand to the outside of that knee. We're pushing the hand into the knee and the knee into the hand. So we're resisting that movement. We're just waking everything up in our hips and our leg muscles. And then put the hands back on the hips, breathe in to prepare. And as you breathe out, just open that knee again and see if that feels quite a bit looser it should do hold that for as long as you want to and then come back and shake it through well done so now getting ready to ground the foot down the left hand side so rock back on the heel splay the toes replace them with a monkey foot clench them bring the weight into that leg activate your core set your gaze or something to help with your balance Raising this knee, hugging it towards you, circling the ankle one way and then the other. And then hands onto your hips, just take that knee out, check in with your body, how it feels today, where you've got to, where you're feeling tightness and tension, and bring it back and shake it through. Get ready to revisit that leg, so grounding the foot back down again, setting your balance. Raising that knee again, this time bringing the hand to the outside of the knee, pushing the knee into the hand and the hand into the knee, resisting that movement. Really strong resistance there from both parts of your body. And then bring your hands back to your waist, Breathe in to prepare, and as you breathe out, open that hip to the side. Check if that feels more open for you, less restricted. You could pause the video and do a couple of those if you wanted to. See how you've got on with that movement improving as time goes on. And then bringing that back, and just shaking that through. So while we've opened our hips now, let's go into tree for our final balance. So bringing the weight back onto the right hand foot, grounding that foot, sweeping this knee out onto the side of your toe down the mat, drawing that toe in towards your ankle. Stay in there if that's enough for you. It's absolutely fine. You're still having all the benefits of balancing. You can feel your ankle making all those adjustments. Just stay there. Or if you want to take it further, I invite you to either take your foot to the inside of your calf or the inside of your thigh or the front of your thigh, but please don't put any pressure directly on your knee. This knee, you're encouraging it to come back. Be standing nice and upright, a big strong tree. Taking your hands into heart centre, pushing into the heels of your hand, lifting your chest to the ceiling if you can. And stay there if that's enough for you. 
or if you want to, you can breathe your arms up, relaxing at the shoulder, draw your arms back. Open your branches if you want to. And if you want to test your balance further, you can float your branches in the spring breeze. And just feel your ankle computing all those additional balances that it needs to do. All the while you're calming your mind and getting rid of any stress and tension you had for other things because you're busy trying not to fall over. <laughs> Got something new to worry about. So obviously you're coming out of this at any time if you want to. We're gently coming down, ready to do the other side. Taking, grounding the foot on the left hand side, sweeping the knee out to the side, onto the toe. Drawing that toe in towards your ankle. Stay in there if that's enough. Or coming up to your calf. Or the inside of your thigh. Or the front of your thigh. Avoiding your knee. Push into the heels of your hand. Lift your chest to the ceiling. Keep breathing. If you want to, raise your branches. Relax your shoulders back and down. You want to open the branches of your tree, reach through and add in, only if you want to, a flurry in the breeze. Ooh, a gale then. <laughs> Wonderful. Coming out of it at any time if you want to, when you're ready coming down. Lovely. So we're going to get ready to come down towards the floor now. So I'm going to invite you to do two postures to get there. If you want to skip both of these, if you've got, they cause you any issues, you can just come straight down to a seated position or you can try one or the other. So firstly, our feet are together and they're parallel, as close together as is comfortable for you. And we're bending our knees and coming down towards a squat. And then when you get there, if you tense your fingers and bring yourself up as upright as you can, that's enough for you to stay there. Or if you'd like to test your balance further, bring your hands up into heart centre and your body upright. And then just check back in with your toes being active in this position. See if you can raise yourself and lower, raise yourself and lower. Just activating our feet muscles and our toes. It's really good, the surface of our feet. Wonderful. Now come down to a seated position if that's been enough for you for your knees. Or we're going to take our knees out to the side and come into a seated front position. So you're trying to get your heels as close as possible and your knees back as far as you can. Again, come up onto tented hands, if that's enough for you. Or if you want to take that a step further, you can try and come upright and bring your hands again back into prayer position. This is quite a strong stretch, come out of it at any time if you need to. Or if you're comfortable, you can raise your little frog prince crown and pop it onto your head. And then come down to the floor and join me for the next section if you'd like to. I'm going to try and help loosen up some of the stiff and um, achy hip joints that are out there at the moment. So we're going to start off in bound angle by bringing the soles of your feet together and shuffling your sit bones as close in as you can to your feet, either by walking yourself, lifting yourself, or drawing your feet back. And to begin, we're just going to gently pulse our knees towards the mat. Just a gentle pulse, not trying to force anything. 
And this is called Bound Angle or Butterfly Pose. So we're just floating our knees like the wings of a butterfly, gently pulsing them. If you're joining me for floor yoga today, I'm assuming that you are in good health. So if you have got any underlying health conditions, or if you are expecting a baby, please seek further guidance as I'm not there in person to help you with modifications. So we're just gently pulsing there, encouraging our knees to the mat, warming up our hip joints, getting that synovial fluid flowing, oiling our hips to start us off. And then going to take your um, right leg out in front of you, and we're going to try and bring this left leg closer to us. Now for you that might be holding behind your thigh, you might be able to reach around and hug your knee towards you, or you may even find that you can reach down, get your foot to the crook of your elbow and hug your leg like a baby towards you. So just do whichever variation is right for you today. And then we're hugging that leg towards us and we're rocking it like a baby. So just taking it out to the side and into the centre. Do this in your own time. Listen to your own bodies, whichever feels right for you. But this is a lovely, caring stretch for our hips. Just rocking and hugging. Keep breathing while you're doing this, all the time in yoga. Breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. And I'm going to swap over legs. And again, just grab whatever you can. Just listen to your own bodies. Don't worry what that might be. If you're just getting here, that's absolutely fine. You're still getting the same benefits. If you're able to, you can take that a little further. And again, we're hugging towards us, taking out to the side, into the centre. So I can feel that the hip on this side is much tighter for me than the other side. So not only are we all different, but even our own bodies can be different on one side to another. So don't ever let it concern you. Just work with what you've got today. Wonderful. stay where you are. I'm just going to move so that you can see me better. And we're just going to bring our soles of our feet onto the mat, hip distance apart. Trying to sit nicely up on our sit bones and use your hands with some support to keep you there if you like. If you find that you're rounding in your lower back whenever um, we're giving you um, an instruction to go up in your sit bones in yoga, you might find you benefit from either a cushion or a towel um, blanket rolled up behind you. And just sit on the edge of that and find yourself more elevated in that position. And then rather than rounding the bottom of your spine and be using your lower back to do twisting movements, you're actually using your upper back, which is more correct. So just listen to your own bodies. So back where we were, soles of the feet on the floor, hip distance apart, nicely upright on your sit bones. Gonna breathe in to prepare. And then as we breathe out, we're just going to take the knees down to the mat. Let your body twist slightly if it needs to. Breathe back up to centre down to the mat on the out breath. And we're just going to do that in time with your own breath. So the movement will feel like a massage on your hips, a twist in your body. And it's very beneficial. Just imagine yourself as a set of windscreen wipers on your car. Just going from side to side. So I'm tending to turn my head to talk at you, to you, but you could actually turn with your knees, feel that twist, 
more dynamic through your body whilst massaging your hips. Lovely. So next time you come towards me, stay there. I'm just going to come up a little more and we're going to take the opposite hand to the opposite knee. Hug back there. And then we're going to take this arm and we're going to open up on an out breath, trying to look behind us. Lead with your eyes on a twist and that will help you twist round a little further. Keep breathing in that position. Feel your breath going into any areas of tightness and tension and let it take it away. As you breathe out, you might find you can rotate around a little more. Just listen to your own bodies, don't force it. And then coming back to centre. So we're going to move that over to the other side now. So windscreen wiper those knees over. Take the opposite hand to the opposite knee. Breathe in to prepare. Breathe out. Open up. Lead with your eyes. Twist around. Keep breathing in that position, feeling your breath going into any areas of tightness and tension. You might find those in your hips, in your lower back, in your upper back, your shoulders. Just breathe into those, let your breath take it away. And then you might find on the next in-breath, as you breathe out, you can twist around a little further. Always listening to our own bodies. And then coming back. Well done. So we're going to come on to all fours now. If you've got any issues with your knees, you might like to take a cushion or a blanket under your knees, or you might like to fold your mats so to you create a little bit more cushioning. And then what we're aiming to do now is to have our knees under our hips and our hands under our shoulders with a nice neutral spine. Think about drawing your belly button up towards your spine and keeping active in your tummy, engaging your core. And then relax, just checking in with that position. And we're going to start to do our cat-cow breathing. So we're going to breathe in, push our bottom up, sink our belly down, draw our heart forward, lift our head. As we breathe out, we're rounding, bringing our head through, as if we're trying to look at our belly buttons, rounding in the spine. Breathe in, lengthen. Sink the belly down, push the hips up, draw the heart forward. Do this in time with your own breath. Do as few or as many of these as you like to, as feels right for you today. If you want to pause the video, and continue with this cat cow breathing. Please feel free. A wonderful one to do when you get up in the morning and before you go to bed at night. And then on the last one, we're coming back into a neutral spine. And we're going to take the foot on the right hand side out, as far to the side as you can comfortably get it with the foot grounding down. And then we're trying to put our shoulders back over our wrists to start with. And we're starting to think about just drawing some circles, or nurkles if you want to, that's a new word I've just created, but circles with your knee and your hip. And as you feel that movement starting to get a little freer, if it does, you can increase the size of those circles and bring your shoulders into the equation too, letting them come back. 
and down. So you might find that you can bring your bottom towards your feet, take your knee out to the side and back in. Just listen to your own bodies and do what feels right for you today. But keep grinding down through that foot, grinding that down into the floor. Last one. And we're going to take that knee back under the hips and we're just going to take a moment pushing back into extended child's pose so bringing your bottom towards your heels and your head down towards the mat if it doesn't come to the mat you might like to fold your arms or you can make potato hands to rest your forehead on just do what feels comfortable for you this is a restorative pose so you're just going to take a couple of breaths there, breathing all the way into your belly, breathing out, letting everything soften and sink. And then gently bring yourself back up to all fours, check in with your alignment, so shoulders are above the hands and knees are above the hips. Nice neutral spine, nice engaged core. Taking the other leg out to the side now, foot planted on the floor, as far as is comfortable for you. And then starting with those little circles, feeling that movement. And then listening to your own bodies, and if it feels appropriate for you, starting to make the circles larger and deeper, bringing the shoulders into the equation. And then coming back to all fours, take another moment pushing back into extended child's pose, relaxing down. And then coming back to all fours. We're just going to make sure we're nicely aligned again. I'm going to breathe in to prepare. I'm going to take the um, foot on the right hand side back away from you. Just keep the toe on the floor if that's enough for you. Stretch it away from you. Or if you want to, breathe in to prepare. And then lift that leg. Try and get it in line with your bottom if you can. Keep breathing in that position. If that's enough for you, stay there. Or if you want to, you could raise the opposite arm. Nice, strong, superman position. And then you can just take that down to the floor at any time if you want to. Or if you want to add on, you can draw the elbow to the knee. And do a couple of those. Just listening to your own bodies and doing what feels appropriate for you. And then come back to all fours. I'm going to do the same on the opposite side now. So just pushing that leg back away from you straight, staying on the toe if that's enough for you. Or if you want to, breathe in to prepare, and then breathe that and lift that leg, trying to get it in line with your hips. That's enough for you to stay there, or you can take the opposite arm up. Keep breathing in that position, coming out of it at any time if you need to, or if you'd like to add on, just crunching knee to elbow, and elbow to knee. Relaxing back 
into that extended child's pose. And then staying in that extended child's pose position, just reach your hands away as much as you can. Splay your fingers. Take your feet up, hip distance apart and tuck the toes. And we're going to get ready to either come up into downward facing dog or if that causes you any issues you can just leave your knees down and come up into a half dog. So we're tucking our toes, breathing in to prepare, breathing up, pushing up. And then try and sink your weight into your heels, drawing your heels down towards the mat. Keep breathing in that position. Bend both knees. Try and bring your chest down closer to your legs. And then try to keep your chest in that position. Straighten your legs. Keep breathing in that position. Coming out of it any time if you want to. If you want to, you can bring one leg up into a three-legged dog and you can either replace that leg or you can bring it through, trying to get it between your hands, just hovering above the mat and shooting it back up again. And coming down, swapping over, taking the other leg up either replacing it or bringing it down, hovering it just above the mat between your hands and then taking it back up again. One more. And taking it back up again. Remembering you can come down to your knees at any time if you need to. But if you're fine, we're just going to take our heart forward, so we come into a high plank. So you're pushing through the heels of your legs. You're imagining your body could have a ball bearing, go from the crown of your head and roll down your back to your heels. Lovely. And drop your knees if you want to, or just bend your arms, bring your body down to the floor. Flatten out your feet, coming all the way down to the mat. Take your head to one side, take your arms down beside you with the backs of your palms on the mat. In prone position, just take a couple of restorative breaths there. Just letting your blood pressure go back to normal. In this gentle yoga practice. And then when you're ready, bring your arms up. So your forearms are on the mat beside you. Palms are facing down. Arms are tucked in as close to your body as possible. Bring your forehead onto the mat if that's comfortable for you. If it's uncomfortable, you can bring your chin. We're gonna breathe in to prepare. And as we breathe out, we're just pushing up into Sphinx. So the elbows stay down and we get that bend in the lower back. Keep breathing in that position, feeling that nice stretch. And then lower yourself. Bring the hands back towards the side of your chest, still keeping the elbows tucked in. Breathe in to prepare. And as you breathe out, push up, still keeping a bend in the elbow. So you might come to here, here or here, but the elbow is still bent in cobra. Lifting our hearts to the ceiling. We breathe in. As you breathe out, just look over one shoulder. Have a little hiss if you want to. Breathe back into centre. Breathe out. Hiss over the other shoulder if you want to. Gently come back down. 
And then you can move your hands back a little more if you want to. So these are variations. You can either keep repeating the lower options or if you want to go into um, an upward facing dog, we're going to bring our foreheads back on the mat, breathe in to prepare. As we breathe out, we're pushing ourselves up to straight arms. We're letting our hips come off the floor but sink down and we're lifting our chest to the ceiling. Only take your neck back if it's strong. Keep breathing in that position, feeling that lovely stretch. Try and get your shoulders away from your ears, your chest to the ceiling. Coming out of it at any time if you need to. And gently coming down to the mat. Take your head on the other side now, bring your arms down beside you with the backs of the hands down. Take a couple more restorative breaths. Feeling your belly inflate with air. Lift you off of the mat, almost. <laughs> Some lovely deep breaths there. As you exhale, letting everything soften and sink. And then when you're ready, roll over onto your side and come over onto your back. Well done. So we're going to do another one for our hips now. So your feet, you've got soles of your feet on the mat and they're hip distance apart. And I just want you to cross your leg on the right hand side over the left knee as if you're reading the papers. And then just bring your hand up onto that knee and just see if you can encourage it to go down and away. Just feeling that nice stretch again. So pulling, pushing rather, it down and away from you. And that, again, really helps to loosen out our hips. So if that's enough for you, you can continue with that movement. Or you can see if you can reach through, it's called threading the needle. So you're reaching through the gap in between. And you're lifting the leg that was down on the floor. And just try and hug that towards you. The head is down on the mat and relaxed. Stay there if that's enough for you. Or you can raise that leg. You might even find you can walk up a little further up that leg and hug it towards you. Just feeling that really deep sciatic stretch. Keep breathing in that position. If you want to challenge yourself a little further, you can breathe in, take your chin to your chest and as you breathe out, raise your head towards that leg. Keep breathing in that position, the locks are on your tummy. Relax the head back down, relax the leg back down and swap over. Feet on the soles of the feet on the floor, hip distance apart, crossing over that leg, pushing that knee down and away, encouraging that stretch. And if that's enough for you, stay there, continue with that action, or reach through, bringing this standing leg up towards you, threading the needle. Stay there if that's enough for you, just hugging that leg towards you, 
or you may find you can straighten that leg and come up anywhere on that leg. So try and encourage that closer towards you, increasing that stretch. Stay there if that's enough for you, or pull your belly button back to spine, put your pelvic floor on, put your chin to your chest, breathe in as you breathe out, raise your head off the mat and towards that leg. Keep breathing in that position. And gently bring the head back down and gently bring the leg back down. Lovely. Well done. So we'll take full body stretch there. So point the toes away. Raise the arms up over your head. Stretch your fingertips away. Have a nice full body stretch. And then we're going to just bring the knees out over our chest. We're going to hug those legs towards us. Your head is down and relaxed. You're hugging your legs, but you're not interlacing your fingers to avoid raising your blood pressure. So breathe in to prepare. Breathe out. Squeeze those legs towards your body. Lovely. Then take your arms out like a letter T with your palms facing down the floor, your shoulders down and relax. Breathe in to prepare and then as you breathe out, just twist your knees down towards the floor. Knees are down, feet don't go out, are down. So if your knees don't come to the floor, you might like to put some blocks or some cushions under them. Or just bring your feet to the floor and have your knees up slightly. Don't have them dangling. And you might like to breathe in and as you breathe out, take your head in the opposite direction. All of the time your shoulders are relaxed and down. Feeling that lovely twist. And then Breathe the knees back to the centre, and as you breathe out, just rotating down in the opposite direction, shoulders staying down and relaxed. Knees and feet coming to the floor, and if they don't, use some cushions under your knees, or just get your feet to the floor. Breathe in and as you breathe out, bring your gaze in the opposite direction. And then breathe, bring your head back to centre, breathe your knees back to centre. And stretch that away again into a full body stretch. And then if you'd like to end with um, a back bend and inversions, I'll invite you to do whichever element of those is comfortable for you today. So to start with, we're just going to bring the soles of our feet up again, hip distance apart. Bring your head back to centre. You're going to breathe in. And as you breathe out, just see if you can lift your hips slightly up into bridge. Just do whatever degree of that lift feels appropriate for you and come out of it at any time. Or if you want to, you can raise one leg, still driving those hips up, replace and raise the other. Replace, raise those hips up again. If you want to, you can walk your heels in closer to your bottom, extend that bridge a little more. And then taking those legs back down, replacing your spine vertebra by vertebra. And then to finish, you can either just have your knees back over your chest again and give those a little hug towards you, 
or you might like to take your hands round to the back of your hips and see if you can roll up into a half shoulder stand or you can take that further or come up into a full shoulder stand just taking your hands further up your back either side of your spine coming out of this at any time if you want to Bend the knees if you're in a full shoulder stand and gently roll yourself back down. Stretch that away again. And just say well done to yourself and come into Shavasana ready for relaxation. Namaste. So lying down in Shavasana, relaxation pose. Start to bring your attention to your breath. counting or controlling it, just observing it going in and out of your body, breathing in and out through your nose if you can. If thoughts pop into your head, that's fine. Just choose not to engage with them now. Instead, just imagine observing those thoughts and sending them away as you exhale. Take a nice deep breath in and relax. You're perfectly safe, perfectly calm, relax. Imagine a wave of relaxation hovering at the crown of your head like a golden light and allow it to wash over you, filling you with light just like the setting sun, starting from the crown of your head through all the muscles of your head, face, neck, as they fill with light, they all relax and soften. The golden light now moves to the muscles of your shoulders. Take a deep breath in, and as you breathe out, any knots and tightness, relax your shoulders down and let tension melt away into the wall. Relax, relax. See the golden relaxation now flow down both your arms, softening and warming right down to the fine bones of your wrists and hands. A wave of relaxation now flows down your spine, vertebra by vertebra, warming and relaxing, lengthening and softening releasing the pressure on your discs and nerves. Now bring your breath into your belly, 
fill it with golden light. Draw that light up through your ribs, all the way up to your collarbones. Then breathe out as everything relaxes, softens and sinks. Relax. golden wave now flows down through your hips and pelvis, down both your legs to your feet and they become heavy and flop, yielding their weight to the floor. Relax. You are now filled with the golden light from the crown of your head to the tips of your toes. Calming your mind, melting and softening your muscles, and making you feel worth your weight in gold. And as you relax, start to imagine you're on a trip to the beach. You're walking towards the sea. If you listen carefully, you can hear the waves. You can feel the sea breeze on your skin. You can smell the salty air. As you walk towards the sea, your body relaxes and your mind calms more and more with each step you take. The sea ahead of you is a brilliant blue. As you walk on, you come onto a crescent of white sand beach. The sand is so soft, it's like talcum powder. You imagine taking your shoes off and feeling that silky smooth sand under your feet. You walk along to the water's edge. You have the beach to yourself, perfectly safe, perfectly calm. You hear the waves ebb and flow. Breathe with the gentle rhythm of the waves. Inhale the clean, salty sea air. And exhale anything you're worried about, any aches and pains. Let them float out on the tide. Sit or lie back and relax. There's a comfortable lounger inviting you to rest on a warm towel with the shade of a palm tree if you'd like it. Watch the waves ebb and flow. Watch the seabirds glide on the breeze. Calm and relax. Know at times the sea can become, become rough and challenging just like life, but that time passes, the calmer seas are always ahead. Enjoy the sights, sounds and smells of the beach. Feel the sun warm your skin. Feel the breeze across your cheeks. Relax back. Thankful for the beauty of nature. 
and knowing that you can come back here in your mind whenever you choose to. But for now, rest and relax. Rest and relax. soon be time to go about your day. So I'm going to wake you up and when I do you'll feel full of energy and full of life, ready for the rest of the day. So if you want to bring your attention back to your breath, the rise and fall of your abdomen and chest, feel the ground beneath you, the walls around you. Wiggle your fingers and wriggle your toes if you want to. Have a big stretch and a yawn. And when you're ready, carefully bring yourself up to a seated position. Give yourself a big, huge hug. And namaste.